All right, so you're looking for a guide to buy a new MacBook in 2024. And if you're just like me when I first bought my first MacBook, then you're probably a beginner. You're looking for a guide that's gonna tell you exactly what MacBook to buy that's gonna take you through the next few years, whether that's for college or that's for personal use. And you're looking for something that's just gonna work great and it's gonna last a long time. Now, this is probably gonna make a lot of people upset, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I don't think that specs really matter much when it comes to an M series MacBook. I think they're all pretty great. I think they all work amazingly, especially if it's your first ever laptop, you're looking for something for school, for something to do your day-to-day -day work, whether that's browsing the internet, watching YouTube videos, watching content, writing papers, going through your Blackboard or Canva, anything that you do as a student, I feel like every single M series chip will give you everything you need. Now, six years ago, when I was making my first MacBook purchase, it was a little more complicated. There was Intel MacBooks, there was dual core, quad core. Uh, and back then, I didn't really know much what a GPU core, a CPU core, or even RAM really was. <laughs> to be completely honest, I don't really think I 100% understand it now, but I do know that through my previous six years, I've actually upgraded Macs multiple times. I've tried the desktop. I tried going with iPad OS as my main computer. I've tried the Airs. I've tried the Pros. I've tried every single one, and there hasn't been a single M series MacBook that hasn't been able to do what I do here, which is for my content creation. I do shoot video in log format originally through my Canon R6, and now I'm shooting it in ProRes through the Ninja 5, which is a separate monitor, and that really takes up a lot of power, a lot of storage, and I've been able to edit my videos flawlessly through every single MacBook from an M1 Mac Mini to the M2 MacBook Air to the M Pro MacBook Pro. And then my wife uses an M1 MacBook Air to edit her YouTube videos, which also render and work just great. So the first thing to ask is really, what is your budget? Now, if you're someone that's in a more restricted budget, which I myself was six years ago, I was just a student out of college and I was just looking for a MacBook that was gonna be great. It was my first premium computer experience. So I was looking for something that was more on the budget end. And if you're someone that's on a restricted budget, whether you're a student or you're just a person living a normal life, then I definitely think that you can stick under a thousand and you can be looking only at the Air MacBooks and completely skip out on the pros. You can find all of the Airs less than $1,000, especially if you look through a renewed website like Amazon or Best Buy, those all have options renewed MacBooks. I personally would say that if you're on a very restricted budget, the M1 MacBook Air, even though it's an older design, it still works great. It still does everything flawlessly. Like I mentioned earlier, my wife also does content creation and she edits her videos, her YouTube videos up to say 30 minutes on the MacBook Air M1 and it works just as great. She uses a external monitor, external accessories. She edits off of an SSD that's external and everything works great through that MacBook as well. That one you can find possibly for $600 or less. And I think it's a great option, especially if you're a student or you're on a very restricted budget and are looking for something that's gonna do all of your day-to-day -day tasks just fine. Now, if you do have a little bit more room in your budget, you can go for the M2 MacBook Airs and you have two options, whether you wanna go for the 14 inch MacBook Air, which probably comes in from eight to $900, or you wanna go with a 15 inch MacBook Air that comes in from 900 to $1,000. Now, both of these are gonna be the exact same in terms of power. The one that's 15 inches just obviously is a larger MacBook. It works great, it has a larger screen, but everything else and performance wise, they're basically the same. But other than the design and the way the screen looks, these MacBook Airs will crush, I'd say even 98% of work. And listen, back when I was a student as an undergrad, I was using an HP Pavilion laptop that probably was two, $300. I was running MATLAB computations on it and it worked just fine. It probably took maybe an extra minute over someone that had a newer laptop, but it was just fine. It worked just as fine. I could type all my Google Docs, I can do all my documents, check through all of my Canva, do all of that work with an older $200 HP laptop so I can guarantee an M series MacBook Air will get you through school, will get you through your daily tasks that you have to do as well. But if you're someone that can stretch your budget above $1,000 or you're just a baller just looking for the best of the best, the best thing you can buy, then you can definitely start looking more at the pros. And when you get to the pros, I would say you're in the similar situation as with the MacBook Airs. I would recommend you look at previous chipsets because I don't think the power addition that you get from going from say an M1 series chip 
to an M3 series chip on the pros, it's not gonna be worth it to pay almost double in some cases than you would with just going with a renewed M1 chip. Now, unless you're a professional shooting for a giant studio or doing all this heavy work, I don't even think you would really benefit from going with the Max chip over the Pro chip. Like I've said before, I have an M1 Pro MacBook Pro back there. That one's able to handle the ProRes footage that comes out of the Ninja 5. I'm editing everything off of external, running it on Final Cut Pro, and it works just fine. This is now a two generations behind MacBook Pro, and it still holds up even now, two years later after its release which is why I would recommend that if you are looking at the pros, I would suggest that you go for an M1 Pro because you can get it renewed. If you go for the 16 inch model, you can get it anywhere from $1,200 to $1,400, which is actually pretty inexpensive, especially when you compare it to the M3 Pro and the M3 Max prices that are almost twice as much as going with a renewed M1 Pro. And with all that money you save, you can actually buy different accessories for the MacBook, especially if this is your first step into the Apple ecosystem of computers. You can buy external hard drives, you can buy Thunderbolt docks if you have a desk setup, or you can probably even build a whole desk setup for the price that you would have paid had you gone for a brand new M3 Pro or M3 Max. And I don't know if it's just a frugal part of me, but I would rather save that money and instead wait for whenever you do wanna upgrade or you have to upgrade, or you can just use it now and not really save it, but rather buy extra accessories that you were already thinking of buying anyways. And if you are looking at the pro computers, I would even say, again, away from the specs, the only decision that you really should be looking at is do I wanna go with a 14 inch MacBook Pro or do I wanna go with a 16 inch MacBook Pro? Now, all of the chips that's inside, you can find similar ones inside of the pros as well. The 14 inch does have slightly less power on the base model, but again, that's now gonna work say on 97.5% of the workload instead of 98% on the step above. So realistically, do you want a 14 inch screen or do you want a 16 inch screen? Now I know as myself, like what I did with my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I said I want the larger screen and that's the one I'm gonna go with because it's the bigger one, right? But you have to think that this one is massive. It's a pretty large laptop. So if you're someone that travels a lot or you commute a lot and have to throw this on your backpack, this is gonna be pretty heavy compared to the 14 inch MacBook. And also if you're someone that likes going out to work in coffee shops, if you work alongside someone else, like whenever I go with my wife, those tables are really small. So whenever I take out my 16 inch MacBook Pro, it takes over half of the table and it gets really difficult for both of us to work in the same exact table. But on the other hand, having a 16 inch MacBook Pro is really great whenever I am away from my desk, whether I wanna be working in the living room or I really wanna take it portably anywhere else, it's great to have that larger screen. The speakers sound great, but more than anything, it is nice to have a larger screen, especially if you're gonna be using this as your sole computer. Maybe you don't have a TV setup, maybe you don't have a desk setup where you can hook it up and have a larger screen. If this is gonna be your main machine that you're gonna be working off of, having a larger screen is beneficial. Now you might have noticed that this whole time, not once have I talked about different tiers, different ladders of every single kind of series. I haven't told you the M2 Air, but make sure you upgrade this or make sure you upgrade that for a couple hundred more dollars. And that's because for all of these MacBooks, I'm talking about the base model only. I don't really think that a lot of people really need to upgrade to the next tier of laptop because you will only be needing the base to complete every single task. Now, the only reason that you should be upgrading or even possibly considering it is if you do need more space on your laptop for say, you hold all your photos, you hold all your documents, all your videos that you've ever taken. So that's the only time that maybe you wanna upgrade to the next tier. But if you do go with the Pro, you get 512 gigabytes. If you go with the MacBook Airs, you will start off at 256 gigabytes. Now, I would even argue there that it's not even worth upgrading still because it is $200 to upgrade to the next tier of laptop if you're buying a brand new which means that for $200, you're only getting possibly 256 gigabytes of storage. Whereas if you look other places, say like the external route, you can buy one terabyte for half of that price. So if you're willing to carry it on portably on an external hard drive, that would probably be the easiest route. But I would even say that if you're someone that likes having it on the device, available whenever you need a photo, whenever you need a video, whenever you wanna look through those memories, you could even look at going through the cloud service, getting two terabytes of storage costs roughly $100 a year through a lot of these services. 
so you can get cloud storage for two years and you never have to worry about ever upgrading any device, especially if you're someone that likes having it on all of your devices. You have to upgrade your iPhone to the next tier up. You have to upgrade your MacBook to the next tier up. You have to upgrade your Apple TV to the next tier up. So instead of doing that, you can always just keep it in the cloud, pay for a monthly service and have all of your photos available all the time as long as there's Wi-Fi around. And even though Apple's lineup of MacBooks is still complicated, you still have the ladder with a lot of different options for a 13, 14, 15 inch Airs, as well as the MacBook Pros, you can choose from different tiers. I still think that now more than ever, it's easier to recommend the base model to 98% of users. But I am curious to see what you guys think. Let me know that in the comments. Are you someone that goes for the base model? Or are you someone that just maxes out your laptop every single time you purchase a new one? Let me know that in the comments. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Click here to watch another one of my videos and I will catch you guys in the next one.